Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Inside the Pigskin. Yes, my name is Scott Morgan Roth, the Motor City Mad Mouth. And I have a great, we have our fearsome foursome here tonight. I don't know if the Minnesota Vikings, what's the name of that defense that was a fearsome foursome? I don't know. I'll have to go back, but maybe it's some of you I don't know. But my fearsome foursome of the night is Coach Bono, Bo Crouch. Of course, those two have a show on Wednesdays at, what, 4 or 5 o'clock. So we got Bo and Bono. And then we'll add, and we have Mel Farr Jr., the birthday boy. All right, happy birthday to Big Mel, and uh, and an early happy birthday to Coach Bono. And guess what? You have to wait a while to have mine because it's in December, so don't worry about it. And Bo, I don't remember when yours was, but if I'm right, right, yeah. all right, well then a belated <laughs> happy birthday to when yours was. What are we talking about tonight? I hate talking about contract stuff, but Brandon Ayuk is one of the people we're going about to talk about the NCAA and Jim Harbaugh to a tackle. Agavaloa finally signing quarterbacks on the move and <clears throat> time permitting, which knowing us probably will. JJ McCarthy in his tournament. Let's get so that said, let's get to it. Brandon IU turned down a trade to the New England Patriots because of their quarterback situation. There's still a possibility he could get traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, Coach Bond will lead off with you. Okay. You know, is it can you understand why he did it knowing that the quarterback situation is it what he wants? I don't have a problem with that kind of thing if you don't want to go to a team where the quarterback situation is less than what you think it should be. But what about you? I I, I wholeheartedly agree. You know, I mean, look, he's at, at the age where, you know, I mean, this is probably not going to be his last contract. You know, he's had success. Um, you know, he – and that's a, a huge factor. The offense that, you know, who's pulling the trigger is a, a huge, huge factor for any wide receiver. And let's not, let's not kid ourselves. That situation in, uh, in New England is, is shaky. You know I mean? They've, they've got a lot of work to do there in a lot of areas, uh, rebuilding wise. Um, so I think it's smart by him. And by the way, your for some fearsome, uh, reference was the, uh, LA Rams or, and, uh, I don't remember who else who who was on it, but I know it was Deacon Jones and Merlin Olson were two of the players. Merlin Olson, Lamar Lundy, and Rosie Greer. Yes. Here we go. Here's our version of it. Okay. Thanks, Coach. I was I probably would have had somewhere I'd have to research it later, drive me crazy, but you saved me from that. <laughs> okay. The Lions so had a fearsome to... foursome too. The Lions had a fearsome foursome too. Oh yeah, what is it? Uh was Bill Glass, Darius McCord. Alex Karras and Roger Brown, who later, yeah. Roger Brown later went to the Rams and replaced, I think it was Lamar Lundy and the Fierce and Force over there with the Rams. Yeah, the only, the only people that will remember Alex Karras will be, uh, well, actually, uh, the people in Hollywood and, and my old teacher, Mrs. Gulicki in grade school, when I had my football cards confiscated. I got them all back, but she kept Alex Karras. Oh, I could have killed that woman. Who knows what that <laughs> card would have been worth? I can, Alex Karras, I'm telling you, that woman. Oh, I gave them all back. Yeah, Alex Karras, Miss Galicki, you do better than that. But what am I going to do? She caught me playing with them, and she took the one that was probably worth a lot of money. All right, well, with that said, you know, hey, you know. If I can like throw those that. childhood memories that scar you for life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sat there worried about all the baseball cards I'd have to throw out there, and I have a real complaint in a rap, but Alex Karras, give me a break. Seriously? All right, now let's talk about Brandon Ayuk and the Patriots. And bear in mind, he could still be traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers if he's willing to sign a contract there and get it done. Otherwise, the 49ers will try to keep him as well. But uh, at the, as we are in the moment, okay, do you think he made a good decision not to go to New England because of the QB situation? Yeah, I mean that that position is a dependent position, and <clears throat> you you need to have a guy there that can get you the ball because you're not just worried about this contract. Uh, yeah, you want to make sure that you're able to see the end of this contract, but you 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 know he's young. He's thinking about you know he, he's got to be thinking about his next contract as well. He wants to try to maximize uh, his earning potential right now while he can. Uh, he's been on a championship caliber team. He's gone to the Super Bowl. Now it's about now it's time to get paid. It's time to be selfish and to get paid. And, and obviously they want to put up numbers too. You know these guys have big mm -hmm. egos. Uh, they are divas, and they want to put up, put up numbers. And if if you're going to put up numbers, you need to make sure that you have somebody that can throw you the ball. I can't say that Pittsburgh is a much better situation for for him right now. I mean they have uh, they have a wide receiver there, Pickens, 
Uh, he's a diva. Uh, there's only so many balls uh, that can be tossed around. And Pittsburgh is a team that really likes to run the football. Uh, so, although when Big Ben that was there, they threw the ball a little bit more. But I mean, they want to they want to establish the run with the quarterbacks that they have there right, right. now. Their best bet is to be a more of a uh, run dominant team than being a pass oriented team. So yeah, it was smart for him to turn that money down. I think San Francisco. I think they said it's offered him. I don't know, $24 million, $26 million a year, something like that. They say Pittsburgh has $30 million on the table. I don't believe that. Pittsburgh doesn't really like to pay anybody other than T.J. Watt. They don't pay anyone. So I, I don't believe that. Uh, so we'll, we'll just have to see how it plays out. I think he's probably going to end up going back to the best situation for him, which is where he is right now. Yeah, I think so. Too. All right, Mo, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I agree with, with everybody. Uh, where he's at makes the most sense as far as further in his career. Um, <clears throat> New England, I don't think was ever a real possibility. I mean, yeah. I understand they made an offer, but there was no way he was going to take that job. Not with the quarterback, not really with the whole team, the way it is. So, and then with Pittsburgh, you know, again, they are run first type of offense. They really will be with Russ because we saw how letting him cook worked in Denver and his last year in Seattle. So they're going to go back to what it is he does well. And then if it ends up being fields, his best games are throwing to the flat. So uh, that's not really, you know, encouraging for a receiver. So, I mean, if he wants to do the best thing for his career, it's probably to stay in San Fran. And, um, you know, it, they have a real shot to go try and win a ring again this year. So I don't know why you would want to go – from a winner to a loser, if the price point isn't significantly different. I agree. Number one, I was watching the NFL Network when the Patriots were playing the Carolina Panthers. And it was really weird hearing the Patriots announcer say, well, maybe one day we'll be able to get the better players again. You know, that's not like New England to say that, but unfortunately that's a new reality of the situation. The Patriots simply aren't that good anymore. And Gerard Mayo, I think, is going to do a good job there. He really will. Not I just feel he's going to it'll take a little bit of time. But, uh, but you know, the best place is where he's currently at, Brock Purdy. But the Niners need to get the money straight. And I hope that if cooler heads prevail and Penn hits paper, that Brandon Ayuk remains at San Francisco 49er. All right. With that said, you know, we'll go to a, another former 49ers head coach. Uh, the NCAA gave former Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh a four-year show cause penalty because of his recruiting during the COVID-19 situation. Today, he decided not to be the honorary captain in Michigan's opener versus Fresno State. His parents are going to be there instead. All right, Coach, you know what? I, to me, this is one of the most moronic moves I've ever seen in my life, how the NCAA can give this guy a four-year show cause penalty when he's actually the head coach of the L.A. Chargers, knowing he's never going back there anyway because he won a national championship. And I'll repeat, moronic move I've ever seen, the NCAA giving Harbaugh four years, and yet he ain't going, he's not leaving L.A. Coach, agree or disagree? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. It's, it's uh, you know, they had to do something, I guess. I mean, all, all it does is ensure or guarantee that Harbaugh never returns to college football, which – I fully expect that he has zero intentions of doing so anyways. Where where would he go? You know, his dream job was to go back to his alma mater, to turn around, to win a national championship. He checked all of those boxes. You know, his the only thing he has left, uh, you know, for him personally is he wants to win a Super Bowl. He's been to one, lost to his brother. You know, I suspect that once he's able to tick that box off, then he's ready to – retire i really don't see any circumstances uh that would lead him back to the college sidelines i just don't think there's uh you know especially with you know he had a taste of the nil and the transfer portal and understands that mm -hmm. and there's there's nothing left there for him so it's it's nothing the the bigger the more concerning things are you know the the and really the bigger news is, are the, you know, what sanctions are they going to levy on the people that are still there? I know like uh, mm -hmm. Sharon Moore has a couple things that, you know, he's implicated in there, you know, 
how is that gonna, you know, that has a more direct effect on the Michigan program than right. what happens to Harbaugh because as you said, it's nothing. It's a it's a nothing. Yeah, I think it's a joke. What do you think, Mel? Yeah, I mean the NCAA is a wild, wild west. I don't know how you can fault anyone or or, or place blame on anyone for doing anything they're doing right now because there's really no rules. Uh, now that you have the ability to basically pay players to come there and play, I mean, what are we what are we doing here? I mean, you know, we're talking about impermissible contact, whether it's via text messaging or a cell phone or something like that, or impermissible visits on campus. I mean, come on now. I mean, you're really worried. That's what you're really concerned about. Uh, yeah. Those those uh, those text messages. You're not more concerned concerned about the millions of dollars that's flowing through to these players. Uh, that's helping these players and encouraging encouraging them to make decisions. Um, these players get in contact before they get into the uh, transfer portal and you know, about opportunities and about the type of money that they might be able to get. You know, if they were to transfer to said university, and you're worried about impermissible text messages, it's ridiculous. Yeah, everything about the whole NCAA and Harbaugh situation is a joke. You're just going to give him. Uh, Sanction him for what happened during COVID nineteen during that dead period, really? After he's left, I mean, think about the timing and the sensibility, Bo. What do you think? I mean, you talk about the most useless sanction I've ever seen. But look, you've heard what I say. You know, I, I I love Harbaugh. I always will. You know, because of the type of person he is, and he, like Coach said, you know, he went to Michigan and mission accomplished. They won a national title, uncontested. But what do you think, Bo? Yeah, I mean, obviously the suspension is like a rice cake. It gives you the illusion of food without actually being any food. Like it's just empty calories. I mean, he's there for longer than the suspension is, right? So he's not getting fired in the next four years. So even if he wanted to go back, it won't matter. Now, I don't think he does. But yeah, this is the most pointless suspension ever because here, let me suspend you after you're gone. Ooh, like... <laughs> That, that is a non-learning moment for anybody. <laughs> well, let me tell you, when I was in Alabama and I bumped into Bruce Pearl, and he'll tell, uh, he was telling me, and, and I hope I have a chance to talk to him, he's the Auburn coach, you, you don't have anything good to say about the NCAA either. They were on his case when he was at Tennessee, and now he's got a dream job in Auburn where if you win down in Auburn, you're a god down there. So, uh, But Bruce Pearl, uh, I looked to one of these days get a chance to – go off to Auburn, Alabama, and talk to him. And I think Bruce would be an open book for sure. All right, Candy, station break. You are listening to the South Florida Tribune Publishing Company. We published a book last November called Lessons from the Microphone, Tuning into the Enduring Wisdom of Visionary <coughs> Leaders. It is written by Scott, the Motor City Madmouth Morgan Roth. It is available on Amazon. Barnes and Noble, Kindle, Apple, and Google. You can go to www.selfwordtribune.com. That is our website. There's a link for the book there. There is also a link to buy apparel of the South Florida Tribune or the Motor City Madmouth. You need a hat. You need a sweatshirt or a tank top, depending on the temperature. Go get your merchandise today if you'd like to listen to our podcast. Podcast, you can catch ours wherever you get your podcast. Monday nights we talk hockey, and then we talk baseball. Tuesday nights we talk football. Wednesday and Thursday nights, you just never know what we're going to be talking about on Sports Exchange or Fire Up. Scott has a one-on-one -on -one interview show that he talks that he does on NoFilter.net. It is called the Motor City Mad Mouth Show. If you'd like to advertise. Or sponsor a show. Call Scott, 954-304-4941. If you missed any of this, it's been scrolling on the bottom. Back to the program. All right. There you have it. West Coast win. Love the rice cake analogy. Yeah, I have to admit, that was pretty good. That really was pretty good. Onward we go. And that onward is on to Tua, who did sign a four-year, $212 million extension, which includes $167 million guaranteed for Adam Schefter. Well, <clears throat> the Dolphins did lock in their guy. Coach, is he worth that kind of money, knowing that they probably could have waited a year? I'm still waiting to see if the guy can play two full seasons without getting hurt. But we'll it's, turn it over to our resident 
coach? What do you think well, about that? You know, I mean, obviously they know what's best for their team and, you know, they're, they're the ones that are in the building with them. Um, you know, it's the market price. Uh, you know, he's, uh, he's definitely progressed, you know, and, uh, as you mentioned, I think the key for him is staying healthy. Hopefully they'll be able to do that and we'll be able to see if he is worth it. I do think he's a good, young, dynamic player. Um, they're obviously sold on him or they wouldn't be trying to re-sign him. Okay. Mal? No, he's not worth that money. I mean, very <laughs> few of them are worth that kind of money. I mean, let's be realistic. Uh, but, again, like Coach said, that is the going rate. What are you going to replace him with? He, he's like a point guard. He's like John Stockton. That's what that's who he is. He's right. a, a, a great distributor of the football in that offense. Now you put him in a, in another offense. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't look so good, but in that offense, he, he looks dynamic. And especially with the, you know, with the receivers that they have, the running backs that they have, uh, you know, the creativity of the offensive coordinator, you know, he looks dynamic in that offense, but heck, no, he's not worth that kind of money. But again, that's the going rate. That's what you have to pay him. Well, yeah, I mean, they got the Daniel Jones treatment, right? He had a good year in his contract year, and they he had him over a barrel because what's your other option, right? You have everything built around this guy. There's nobody that you can pick up that's going to be better or better situated to run the offense that has been tailored to his skill set. So, yeah, I mean, you end up paying him. Is he worth it? Uh, I don't think his – resume says he is but you know it's next man up when it comes to quarterbacks if you are a decently above average you're going to reset the market that's just what the quarterback position has become well bottom line is if he stays healthy you have a puncher's chance to make that contract worthwhile but let's just go out there and use the old 48 point if okay if he goes ahead plays all 17 soon to be 18 eventually okay but 17 for now then it could be worth it. But right now, you've got, what, Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill and Odell Beckham if he stays healthy also. In other words, yeah. So there's no question he's been given a lot of receivers. And the one thing he's got going is Mike McDaniel <coughs> that, oh, that he has over Brian Flores. He gets along with him, too. I mean, Brian Flores came from what the Bill Belichick school, whereas – Mike McDaniel was brought in there to be the old softy. Hey, whatever you do, build around to a be nice to this guy or else. And the numbers offensively have been good. But the question is, how many shootouts can you get, depending on how good that defense, but staying on point, uh, that's a lot of money to pay this guy. You know, I always thought to me, he's very, very, very fragile. He has his whole career demonstrates that. But again, it's all about health with him. We're making great time. A couple more topics, and then we'll have some parting shots, and the show will be over. <clears throat> we do long ones, and we'll do shorter shows. This may be one of them, but in quantity, it'll be quality tonight. Tonight's segment, Quarterbacks on the Move, talks about Marcus Mariota going to Washington and Jameis Winston to Cleveland. So, Coach, what are your thoughts about Marcus Mariota going to the Washington Commanders? Um, it's, I'm going to be very brief with this answer. I, I didn't even realize those two guys were still playing. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's good. To me, I, that's how relevant it is. Okay. Yeah, and yet, ironically, they were, what, drafted in the same class, one and two. Yeah. Okay, good enough. All right, Mel, what do you think? Was, was Mariota, was he in Atlanta last year? I thought Mariota, what, what, wasn't he with the Raiders, I thought? Oh, I, well, I mean, it was I a couple know. years ago. Right? That's, yeah, that's, just, <laughs> that's just goes to show you how immaterial, <laughs> that goes to show you how immaterial it is, but the bottom line is. James, he was, didn't he start, what, didn't he start the year off uh, in New Orleans? Wasn't he starting there? Or no, he's never started. Well, no, no, because Carr was yeah, there. He's backing up the car. Yeah. He, he, he <laughs> played <laughs> for So, I mean, they, they you know, James. Everywhere he's gone, they, they brought in somebody to replace him. That's not really good. Uh, I mean, I guess the guy was super talented, man, but he's just a turnover machine. He makes some bad decisions. And Tampa, uh, but somehow or another, somehow or another, um, um, the guy was able to win a national championship with him down there at, uh, at Florida State. Right. But you know, you know, both of these guys have been around for a while. Um, you know, I think they've proven that who you know. They, I think everybody knows exactly who they are. Uh, they're not going to win you some. They're not the guys that are going to take you to the promised land. 
but uh, they're veterans, got mm-hmm. a lot of starts underneath their belt. Right. Um, you know, can 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 keep things together in the event that your starter does go down and you need a bridge guy out there for, you know, one to three games, you know, th- these guys will be able to get that job done. But if you're looking for them to take it to the promised land, it's not going to happen. Well, the main thing is, what I guess everybody can agree what you want out of a backup quarterback. You can get two or three wins somewhere along the lines when the starter goes down. That's what the hope is. But let's face it, Marcus Mariota and Jameis Winston were one and two in the same draft class, and now they're pretty much backups everywhere else. Right, Bo? Yeah. I mean, Mariota going anywhere doesn't move the needle. Uh, I, I actually right. didn't realize he was still in the league <laughs> at this point. Um, Winston, on the other hand, does have a interesting possibility because Deshaun has had a habit of getting hurt. And so there's a real chance that, uh, that Winston gets to play. Now, does that help that team? Not really. Uh, you know, to Mel's point, turnover machine, right? He had that year where he was 30 and 30, 30 touchdowns, 30 interceptions, uh, you know, 30 for 30 is great if it's an ESPN special, but if that's your touchdown to turnover <laughs> ratio, good. it's not awesome. So, um, yeah, neither one of them are going to move the needle for us, but uh, Winston might actually get a play. That's a great line, Bo. You're on a roll tonight. 30 yeah, 30. I mean, if, if he makes yeah. a team, I think I think they would rather have uh, the kid from UCLA because you got him on a rookie contract uh, still, you know, as, you know, Jameis – even though he, you know, he's probably not real expensive, he's more expensive than the guy in the rookie contract. But I mean, the guy, um, I can't think of his name now, um, Dorian Thompson Robinson, DTR. All right, he played pretty well when I watched the game the other day. I mean, they they do like the kid, and he started a game or two last year for him, and he just didn't really perform when he had to when he had to. And I think they kind of, you know, that's the, re- in the, the reason why they ended up bringing Flacco in there later on. I think he had some injuries though too, but. At the same time, he wasn't performing the way that he performed in uh, in the preseason. But, well, and everybody's uh, going to be – everybody's carrying three this year anyway, right? Well, let's face reality. Joe Flacco saved Kevin Stefanski's job. You think about it, or at least close to it. Candy, why don't you put those the background of what the two QBs up? Yeah, Marcus Mariota's career history is Titans 15 to 19, the Raiders from 20 to 21, Falcons 22, Eagles 23, and now he's currently with the Commanders. So there you go. Well, that's his history there, so now you have it. So, But, you know, Joe Flacco did a heck of a job filling in for Deshaun Watson, got him in the playoffs. Right? And now I think he's with Indianapolis, so go figure. That's, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, you know, these guys are both in the same draft class, and if they're, and to me, if they are, if they can do what they're supposed to do, hold a clipboard and take snaps when they have to, then more power to them, but I still find it hard to believe that two guys that were one and two are being talked about uh, with QBs on the move instead of. With so, the so are they saying that, saying that Jaden Daniels he's going to be the starter day one on game one he's going to be the starter? I, I believe so. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Machete Panzoni. Good evening, boys. What's your thoughts on Jamar Chase holding not with two years left on his rookie deal? You know what? That's a good question for everybody. Go ahead, Coach. Lead off. Man, he's a great receiver. Um, I, th- I think he's getting some bad advice from somewhere. Uh, you know, they've got such a good team, a young team, talented team, and they played so well. They've just been slightly off here. You know, I, I hate to see this. I really do. Um, does he deserve more money? Yeah, he probably does. But, you know, holding out after two years, I mean, I see both sides of it. I see his uh, side of it in wanting more and, and feeling like he's earned it. But at the same time, I don't, you know, I don't like what it does potentially to team chemistry. Mel? Yeah, I mean, he's got to realize where he is. Uh, that's another one of those teams that really doesn't pay anybody. Now, they're paying, they're paying Joe Burrow, but they, they don't, you know, historically, they don't pay anybody. That, right. That's, you know, that, that's it. Uh, the, and, you know, you really only have one chance to try to put the team, you know, hold the team, uh, you know, I guess to uh, you know, kind of have them over a barrel where you have some leverage is in your rookie contract because you can negotiate those fines or whatever um, that, that you get those those fines. They can be they can they can be taken away those those fines for holding out. But once you 
you know, on your second contract and you start holding out, then it's punitive. So I think, you know, he has to do what he feels is in his best interest. Uh, the other wide receiver, I believe, is playing under the franchise tag, if I'm not mistaken, right? right. Um, they got one wide receiver playing under the franchise tag. <clears throat> this is the problem that teams have when you draft well and the guys perform. Now you got to deal with it. You know, you got to pay these guys. Right. That's that's just the way that it is. You know, you've done a good job. Uh, it shows that your scouting department did a very good job. Uh, you drafted the guy. You drafted him high. And guess what? He is who you thought he was. Now you got to pay him. It's just that simple. You got to pay him. And it's better to pay a guy early than it is to pay him, pay him late. Because when you wait, you know, which Jerry Jones is finding out, you end up paying a heck of a lot more. True. So pay him good early. Good, good points. Bo? Yeah, I mean, this one's tough because most teams have the precedent of they won't sign you two years early, right? Like most teams kind of hold to that. They'll sign you that year early, right? They want to get the deal done. But two years early, especially to hold out, it it's kind of a bad look when they already have a guy on a franchise tag. You got a defense that isn't the best. Um, you have Burrow who hasn't had the ability to stay healthy. Although I do, I think he does this year because he seems to get hurt every other year. So this would be the year he's healthy. But um, yeah, I mean, this team has a lot of things that it still needs. Like this isn't a, this isn't a surefire Super Bowl team that you can lean on to try and get your money. This is a team that still needs help and coming in an extra year early. I don't think uh, it really helps him or the team. Yeah, he's really in a tough spot because, number one, like Mel alluded to, the Brown family doesn't pay a lot. Paul Brown down to Mike Brown, you know, when you do get money out of them, you really feel like you are robbing the bank. And the fact of the matter is two years versus one, it's a different animal. So I think everybody on the panel is definitely on target. We'll see if he does get paid. But, you know, the reality is if you're holding out, you're still going to be fine for staying out anyway based on the collective bargaining agreement. All right, last topic I want to get to tonight, then we will have time for parting shots if you guys choose to deliver them. J.J. McCarthy is a torn meniscus. Sam Darnold is a starter. And I personally, I'm, I'll give my opinion on this one first. I think this should have been a redshirt year anyways for J.J. McCarthy. But the reality of the situation is, is it may be a redshirt year for all the wrong reasons. So now Sam Darnold has an opportunity to prove he's got one more shot here to prove that he can play in this league because I don't know where he goes from here, coach. What do you think? Uh, it'd be those guys that we're talking about, like, you know, Mariota and uh, Jameis right. Winston you know, fall into that category. I mean, it's unfortunate for JJ, but the good news is it's, you know, from what I saw, it's a meniscus, you know, that's not like a season ending injury. Um, you know, uh, you should, you know, it's typically a, it could be as short as three weeks, you know, could be longer if it's the one where they have to actually go and sew the flap down. But if it's this day, you know, so it, they, it, it does sound like it would be the longer version based, uh, on, the, uh, based on the report I saw uh, earlier today. So it sounds like it will need full on knee surgery to repair it. Okay. So how, Which, how long? So he's done for the year? He's done for the year because realistically, that means he'd be coming back at what end of end of November. Yeah, yeah. there's no way they're bringing him back for that. No, no, I agree. By the way, Machete, you're very welcome. We appreciate your question, Mel. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think all these quarterbacks, you know, should have an opportunity to sit out and watch behind a behind a veteran. Uh, I, I just think, but because of the money now, the ownership just can't wait. No, they got to get them out there fast because they want to find out whether they got the right guy or not. And if they don't have the right guy, they want to move on to the next guy and just keep you know recycling these people until they find uh, the next Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, um, Patrick Mahomes, or, or whomever. But it's I, I didn't see when when he got hurt. I was really surprised when I was watching TV today and that that that, that came up that he had a torn meniscus. Uh, and then you know. I didn't think the torn meniscus, a torn meniscus would keep you out that long. I think I remember a guy, uh, Lars Tate, man. I think he 
played for the University of Georgia, was a running back. I think he had um, he had surgery after the game, like Saturday or Sunday, and was in, and was able to play the next week. He had, you know, he had arthroscopic surgery one week and it didn't miss a week. Didn't didn't miss a game. Had it the, either the Saturday after the game or the Sunday after the game. And was back in the lineup the week the week after. So I, I, I didn't realize that a meniscus tear could keep you out that long, but it's it very unfortunate. On, I didn't see the injury happen. Kind of, yeah, it depends on what kind it is. It's, you know, like they have the one a meniscus where they just go in and they just shave it off, and those, like those, you're back two, three, four weeks tops. And then there's the, you know, when it's really coming away, and and they're afraid they're going to lose the whole thing, then they have to go in and surgically repair it, and that's that's the one that takes takes a long time all right travis holmes in the chat room well, all right travis glad to have you tonight in the chat room all right sam darnold fzn exclamation points a lot of them like since this is not an eye test i can't say how many of them otherwise i'd fail anyways exactly what we all never hoped for two weeks ago get the alcohol ready folks oh my goodness all right well that's how travis feels that's probably how a lot of us feel it's a red shirt year regard and i'm sure this thing will play out anyways over the course of the next few weeks, but I still think regardless of how it plays out, Mr. McCarthy will have a lot of studying to do if he isn't rehabbing. All right. Any of you guys have any parting shots? Coach, lead off. Yeah. Uh, how's, ask uh, Travis how the, how the weather is up there in Canada. How's the weather up there in Canada, Travis? He can't be on the show, but he's going to gonna call in. I mean, right. I guess. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Any other farting shot? Travis, I'll have to think that one through. What about you, Coach? Any? No, that's it. Okay. Good enough, Mel. Yeah, I mean, the Olympics just ended, and, uh, you know, Olympics are always fun to watch. They're always very entertaining. I, I You know, it's nothing like waking up at uh, 5 o'clock in the morning and, and being able to watch something that you actually enjoyed watching. Um, the, the, the sad part is, you know, and I don't have a dog in the fight, but I really feel bad for the girl from UCLA, Jordan Childs, obviously, you know, me being from going to UCLA as well. And this whole situation regarding her medal and, you know, how it's still up in limbo right now. It's like, are we trying to get it right? Or are we trying to just make sure procedures were followed through? Because I don't understand. You know, one instance, they say it was 64 seconds. Uh, the United States says they have something video that is time stamped that said it was 47 seconds, but they won't even consider that anymore. But the big the big thing is the judges were wrong. They incorrectly judged her 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 routine. So are we more concerned about procedures or are we concerned about getting things right? And if they can't figure it out, I think they should just give everybody a medal and let's just go on to the house and just forget about it. I mean, the medal don't cost that much money. How much money could that little bronze medal cost? It don't cost a whole lot. They probably got a whole bunch of them anyway. I mean, Marcone probably's got the, the 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 president over there. He's probably got a bunch of them. He stole a few, and so <laughs> it's no big deal. And there's whoever whoever made them. I mean, there, there's folks running around with medals that didn't earn a medal. Give these give these kids a medal. I mean, you can't take away the ceremony that took place. You can't give the other girl a ceremony. Just, but just be fair. I mean, think about it. We all we're always talking about being concerned with athletes and their mental health. Boy, what is this doing to their mental health? This is just killing them. One minute they won, next second they didn't win. Now now you win again. I mean, come on, you just can't have people on the roller coaster like this. It's really ridiculous. Give them all a medal and let this thing die down and, and let it go away. All right. By the way, Travis Holmes' answer is leaving at 3 a.m. to hit a bucks Jags joint practices tomorrow. Next week, I'll be there. Okay. Good to know. You're on record. Hello, guys. Hello, Ralph Williams. Hey. Any parting shots, Bo? Yeah, well, I, I did want to touch on the uh, um, Sam Darnold getting the start there. Sure. Was um, this will be the first like good team he gets to start for, right? Like he finally right. has a weapon. He's got a defense that's decent. Um, you know, we might actually get to see something out of Sam Darnold. I don't think he's everything he could like everything people thought he might be, but. You, you can bet that this team is a whole lot better than that Panthers team he was at the head of or the Jets team he was drafted to, right? So I'd be curious to see how he performs. <clears throat> and I think he's going to be a, a, a mid-level guy, but uh, this is his opportunity to try and prolong his career. Sam Darnold um, reminds me a lot of uh, Sam Bradford. Is that what his name? Sam Bradford. Two Sams, right? Yeah. 
Yep. It took him a long time to figure out he couldn't play. Long time. <laughs> <laughs> is that a little UCLA USC bias that you're taking? No. There, that, no. I, I mean, in fact, if Sam Darwin went to UCLA, I mean, he went to USC. It doesn't have a whole lot to do with the facts about it. I mean, oh, come on, no, don't tell me there isn't any USC UCLA <laughs> involved in that comment. I understand where you're going, but let's face the reality. We have that USC UCLA thing here. And you're on the Bruins side of the equation, so I get what you're saying. But come on, but I've been bro. saying I've been saying this for however long we've been coming on here talking about Sam Darnold. I, I've, I've been, yeah, very and, you know, biased and, you know, and honest about it. I've been, yeah, biased saying that he went to USC and I didn't particularly care for him when he went there and didn't see what everybody else saw. I didn't see it, but uh, exactly. You know, it, and it just reminds me a lot of Sam Bradford. I mean, it just seemed man, he bounced around, bounced around, bounced around, and everybody. It took a long time for folks to realize, you know what, this guy just really can't play. Well, you know no, what? And, and the I, eyes I, of Jim, I say he's not that guy. He's not that guy. I, this is his. This is his opportunity to stay in the league, like as a backup, right. not as a starter. Well, in the eyes of Joshua Dor, we'll call that a ball buster, okay? Because we got to pass by this guy by putting it up there. But that's as far as I'm going with that. Now, if I really want to go back into history books, okay? Remember, once upon a time, Jim Plunkett was having a hard time figuring it out in New England. How did it work out when he went to the Raiders? He won a Super Bowl. So if you put a guy with a good team, and let's not lose sight of the fact that you got Kevin O'Connell there, who, by the way, is a good offensive coach, maybe, just maybe, Kevin O'Connell is the answer towards getting Darnold figured out, and then you buy yourself a little bit more time as well. So those- okay, Bowl- Scott, you keep drinking that cyanide. I mean, that Kool-Aid. <laughs> Um, what what Kool Aid are you talking about? I, I'm just saying. You're comparing, Trent, you're comparing Trent, Sam Darnold to Jim Plunkett, really? No, I'm not. I'm <laughs> talking about change of scenery. That's it. Change of scenery, Mel. Every now and then, change of scenery does work. He's it had does. change of scenery. How, how many times did he change scenery? Right, so, well, let me tell you something. Last year, who was it? Baker Mayfield wound up at the Rams, and then he ended up going to Tampa. That worked out. He had a few stops along the way. Now, if I could like Baker hold Mayfield. Now, well, yeah, you like him. Okay, well, here, let's just, if we're going to go at each other, let's do it legitimately here, okay? Go ahead. Everybody's waiting for this to happen, okay? Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold is a legitimate comparison because they both have been bounced around like a rubber ball or a ping pong ball. Baker and Mayfield they, has uh, produced. All right. Well, like I said, this this like Bo said, this is Sam Darnold's best shot with the best team, TBD on this one. And JJ McCarthy got a so, clipboard. I, I feel and, like you think the ceiling I was projecting is higher than what I was saying. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I'm saying he can remain in the league as a backup. <laughs> He's not like I don't know how we got from he's going to be potentially staying in the league as a backup to he's going to win a Super Bowl unless you mean as a backup then hey you know well, that's how Jimmy I didn't G say won. he was going to win a Super Bowl as a backup I mean <laughs> the only one capable of doing that is Nick Foles and he did okay and he got hot at the right time now Jim Plunkett even though I'm going back a few years he still went in there and resurrected his career with the Raiders I didn't say that that was going to happen to Darnold if Darnold could have a resurrect type of year off of a plate, then maybe somebody will have enough confidence to bring him on as a starter. But I'm not searching for a miracle here. And even though I'm, I, I don't, I'm not in center where I have a ring around my head or whatever other one. You, I, and this is at my favorite Marshall where I got antennas sticking over my head. But Sam Darnold has a chance to play some quality minutes for a quality system. I'm not anointing them Super Bowl chance. I can think of a lot of teams that will win a Super Bowl long before the Minnesota Vikings. I know that. I mean, look, you know, I, I don't want to curse Detroit. I mean, after all, you know, they did win a couple of playoff games, so they won't have to worry about that anymore. We'll see what happens. And they're getting banged up. So, but I'm glad we had a little animated discussion from within all this. So, what's your parting shot, Bo? Uh, well, now my parting shot is I think it's hilarious that we had an animated conversation about Sam Darnold. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's all right. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you know, my. And my parting shot is congratulations to Team USA Basketball. I did have an opportunity to watch the game against Serbia, and that was one of the best basketball games that I've seen in a while. Serbia had them up against the ropes, what they did, but the U.S. found a way to win it. So I've seen a lot of basketball. I don't watch a lot of basketball, but that was the one. And we did record the gold medal game. I'm looking forward to watching that one as well. But that was a well-played game between those two. 
So there you go. That concludes this edition of Inside the Pigtail. But before we go anywhere, Coach Bono, let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. That's probably as easy as one of your answers earlier. No doubt. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn right here on Tuesday nights and on uh, Coach's Corner with Bo every Wednesday at 4 o'clock on, on Roku. Okay. Mel? You can find me on all the social media at Mel Parr Jr. And then you can follow what we have going on uh, here in Georgia and also in Michigan at Mel Parr Superstar Foundation org. Okay. Now, Josh O'Dor, Inside the Pigskin, does not like when Josh – and the guy's off, and I don't know, whatever. How do you spell delusional? I don't know, but whatever. <laughs> Everything's in everybody's mind. So, you know, we don't mind it as long as it's done with good taste, but who knows? But, anyways, uh, we now that we're out, now that we're off of that interesting comment, but we do like to put them up there. That way, nobody will say we ignore anything. Okay, Bo, how can everybody reach you? Uh, so you can find me on all the socials at Football Talk with Bo, uh, here on YouTube at Football Dash Talk. And, of course, with Coach and uh, Roku, five days a week. And, and, by the way, one of these days, Coach will have a book going once I get up there and outline it for him. And I'm looking forward to participating. We will get this done, Coach. Right. If, if it's the last thing I do, I don't know it's the last thing I do, but I, you, you got to show with Bo and you and I going to have a book. So this is a family that we have here. That's right, right Candy. Take it away. This episode of Inside the Pigskin is sponsored by the South Florida Tribune Publishing Company. We published a book last November. Scott wrote that one, and he finished it, Coach, so there's a chance that he's going to get to yours. Anyway, that less, <laughs> the title of the book is Lessons from the Microphone, Tuning into the Enduring Wisdom of Visionary Leaders. Scott wrote it. George wrote the foreword. It's all about, it's got all kinds of interesting stories about how media has changed over Scott 40 plus years in the business. You got to get the book. You got to read the stories. There's even a picture of a young Scott with a young Muhammad Ali. Get your copy today at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Kindle, Google and Apple. You can find a link on www.selfloridatribune.com, our website, where we also have a link to our merchandise store where you can buy a cap, a sweatshirt, sweatpants, shorts, a coffee mug that says South Florida Tribune or that says Motor City Madmouth, whichever you prefer. Go to our site and get your merchandise today. If you like to listen to podcasts, you can catch us wherever you get your podcasts. Monday nights, we're talking hockey. Too. Monday nights, we also talk baseball. Tuesday nights, we talk football. Wednesday and Thursday nights on Sports Exchange and Fire Up, respectively. You never know what we're going to be talking about. You can also catch Scott on his Motor City Mad Mouth show, which is on nofilter.net. The one-on-one -on -one interview show, typically on Wednesday nights. So check it out tomorrow night. If you want to get a hold of Scott because you want to advertise or sponsor one of our fabulous shows call them at 954-304-4941 or email us at self at gmail.com you can also follow scott on twitter at tribune south on our website we do if you're interested in football because you're listening to this show i'm guessing you're interested in football go check us out we have transcripts from jags dolphins and lions and a lot of the local colleges here in South Florida, FAU, USF, the Gators, and the Hurricanes all send us content regarding football. Check it out. But most importantly, check out our YouTube page. Like us, share us, subscribe, please. And also, go follow all of the people that wonderful people that we have on our network that have their own channels as well. Thanks. Back to you, Scott. All right, Bo, so when I go out there and tag you from all these, I don't care if you retweet them as long as you open them up and you read them so that we can feed all the shows you have. I don't worry about it because one thing I can tell about a lot of our partners out there is I don't know, sharing it's one thing. Being able to use the stuff for your shows means that you're getting this information from the source is what we do. And if anybody thinks I could go out there and figure out how to do all this other scheduling business and all this staggering, forget it. There's people it far was, more qualified just, than I am. <laughs> no, hey, no, I'm not knocking your suggestion. You're, you know, I only dated one Latin girl in my life, 
And the only Latin word I ever knew from her was one that got applied to me. It's called El Stupido. And, you know, I mean, other than Uno days, so that's why she's not here anyway, so it doesn't matter. So when it comes to technology controls, I'm El Stupido. So uh, I'm drinking that Kool-Aid, Mel, by the way. But anyways, when I share this stuff to you guys, hey, if it gives you some uh, hey for the airwaves, it is what it is. But meanwhile, this is our crew tonight. So on behalf of Coach Bono, Mel Farr, Junior, Coach Bro Crouch, okay, who, by the way, will be with. I like this Coach Bo. It's got a BC backwards. I, I, I mean, it, you know, I, I did yeah. coach a little bit. <laughs> this. You got a BC and then a CB. No wonder I'm all messed up. Okay, Mike <laughs> Kelly and Dave Scotty. There you go. I'll tell you what, whatever. And myself and Travis Holmes next week. We appreciate you joining us. And, and uh, thanks to everybody in the chat room that participated as well. So we will see you next Tuesday night on Inside the Pigskin. Everybody have a great week. And We'll see what we have more to talk about next week here on Inside the Victim. Good night, everybody. Thanks a lot for joining us. Have a great week.